Welcome to Love in the Love Boat, a fond and funny look back on the world's greatest cruise ship-based television show. I'm Ishvan, singer, songwriter, and TV fanatic. And I'm Michelle, pop culture enthusiast. Join us as we relive episodes of one of the most watched TV series of all time. Occasionally deviating to pop culture charts unknown. So come aboard. We're expecting you for another edition of Love in the, the Love Boat. Boat. Hey, Michelle. Hey, Ishvan. Hey, you don't have to say it the way that I say it. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get in the mood. Um, hi, you guys. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, yeah, welcome to the show. And again, yeah, if you haven't heard the previous episode, please go back because it was really maybe one of the most enthusiastic episodes we have done, at least on my part. <laughs> but I did like this one. And, um, you know, I would like to kind of just get into it sure. if that's cool. All right. Today, you guys, we have Gopher's Opportunity, written by Sue Masters and John Walsh. Secondly, we have Home Sweet Home, written by Ray Jessel. And Natalie Schaefer, I think Ray Jessel, he, that's a new writing partner for him, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. And finally, we have The Switch, written by Lon Okun. Now, Michelle, we have some pretty good stars on this, and I would love it if you would lead us through. Sure thing. First up, I have the lovely Elaine Joyce. I, I love her. <laughs> she plays Melody Livingston. She's like a dream. <laughs> she was in everything when we were kids, it oh, seemed so, like, in like, game shows. and She's like bizarrely pretty to me. Like <laughs> It's just like this this otherworldly, sort of like an elf. She's like elfin or something. Now, this, she's interesting, though. Yeah, and I always thought she was married to Burt Convy, and <laughs> no, <laughs> I was completely but wrong. You are wrong. She was married to Bobby Van, who's on the Bobby show with Van. her. But... You might be getting it confused because they used to be on a sh- this show together called Tattletales, hosted by Burt Convy. Oh, and that was like a like a I don't know. Evie and I started watching it on Buzzer late at night. It's worth a watch if you haven't seen it. It's where celebrity couples answer questions, try to guess the answer. It's kind of like the dating game, but for celebrity couples. Old game shows, man. <laughs> they rock. Yes, she was also married to which I didn't know Neil Simon. Wow. Yeah, I did not know that one. So the more you know. And then next we have then her husband at the time, Bobby Van, Phil Livingston. What was he famous for? Wasn't he a game show guy or something? He was. And you should know, Make Me Laugh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I <laughs> love Make Me Laugh. Me too. It's the hilarious comedy game, Make Me Laugh. And here is your host, Bobby Oh my gosh, shout out to my cousin Renee because we would play that at home and I'd try to make her laugh all the time. Me and my sister would do the same thing and try to make each other laugh. Couldn't wait for the unknown comic to be on. <laughs> oh my God, it was one of my favorite shows. Mine Gong too. Show and that show, I love those shows. <laughs> that was a good one. I, I wonder if Buzzer plays that. Oh, like they should because they, they killed. He was a great host of that too. He really was. And he was also just an actor. They called him the triple threat because he could sing, dance, oh, and act. I didn't know that. <laughs> yes. Wow. Cool. And he got Elaine Joyce. What a what an awesome life. <laughs> he did. Too bad it was short-lived. Who cares? Yeah, true. He made the best of it. All right. Who else do we have? We have Melinda Nod. Yeah. She played Maggie Walsh. She's great. Yeah, she was really pretty. and um, So cute. She was really cute. Wait, was she in? No. is it, it's, She's not the same girl. Was she in Meatballs? That's no, not her, is it? No, she's not the same girl. But she was in a lot of like TV shows up until the 80s, and then she stopped. Hmm, she looked like that one girl, though. I know, you know exactly who you're talking about. We love the movie Meatballs, you guys. And then we have who we brought up earlier, Ron Palillo. Oh, we love Al Ron Al Bi- Breyer. Yeah. Another great show, Welcome Back, Cotter, is like one of our favorites growing up. I have gone back since and watched. It's still funny. They were all great together. That whole The whole uh, Sweat Hog crew. Mr. Woodman's very funny, too. <laughs> I still enjoy that show. Some you'll go back and you'll be like, what were we thinking? Why was this popular? But some shows, I think, still have a charm and still hold up. And Welcome Back, Cotter, to me, is one of those shows. I agree. And then we have the great Abe Vigoda. Yeah, I love Abe Vigoda, too. He played Charlie Fletcher, oldest... Uh, person working on the ship. Well, he does one of our favorite things, a crew member that you never see ever, <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's there on, uh, you know, spoiler alert, uh, on the precipice of his retirement. Always. But we've never seen him before. Absolutely. And it's like, where's the long-faced, uh, I don't know what his job is, what is he? Like a porter, kind <laughs> yeah, of. the world's his... oldest porter. <laughs> a cabin boy? Yeah, but Ava Goda's on there. You can't go wrong with Ava no. Goda. Then we have the spunky Nancy Walker. Yes. Playing Hetty Waterhouse. Yes. And um, obviously, 
I know her as Rhoda's mom on Rhoda. <laughs> she was perfect as Rhoda's mom. You guys, anyone out there as big of a Rhoda head as Michelle is? <laughs> See, I, I liked Mary Tyler Moore growing up. It was a great show, a classic, classic show. I like but, Mary Tyler Moore, too. Oh, I love that show. But I didn't, like, I didn't dislike Rhoda, but I just did not watch uh, that show in the way that you did or enjoyed it the way that you did. It's just like everything about it was the epitome of 1970s. I know Nancy Walker from what, Michelle? Bounty commercials. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> I don't know if there was a bigger commercial other than the Mr. Whipple commercials that were on TV when we were kids, but the quicker picker upper <laughs> was everywhere. Hey, Rosie, look who just walked in. Calvin Thomas, the original absent minded professor. I'm ready for his theories and his spells. Half a bounty? Bounty's the quicker picker upper. Half a sheet will prove it. Good day, ladies. Good spell, Prof. Be my guest. Half a towel? Half a bounty. Half is getting in all fast. How much faster is bounty than other towels? Let's do a little research. Bounty against the next best two-ply brand. Look how much faster bounty is getting the whole spell. In point of fact, this brand can't absorb as fast nor as much. Bounty's truly remarkable. You learn fast, Professor. Bounty's the quicker picker-upper. Half a sheet will prove it. Didn't you do that too when you were a kid? Yeah, of course Spill you did. things and then try to like sop it up, like blue, sop it up <laughs> with a paper towel. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we're so influenced by TV. TV, it's we were ridiculous. raised by television. Why are we doing this thing? Because we're so <laughs> completely overwhelmed by it all. Uh-huh. But yes, Nancy Walker, that is our cast. We start this cruise off, you guys, with a very excited gopher. Because he has some friends that he went to, one of which he went to hotel school with. (laughs) Isn't that what he did? I guess. I didn't know there was a hotel school. Yeah, that's what he trained in originally. I don't know how he got into an assistant purser's gig, but that is what he did. And he's very excited because he hasn't seen him for a while. And I guess they have some kind of uh, big announcement to make to him. Excuse me, please. Hi. Welcome aboard. Hi. Julie, have they got here yet? No, but believe me, I'm on the lookout. Mr. and Mrs. Phil Livingston, Palm Springs, California. Right? You know, it's been about four years since I've seen Phil. Good. Did I tell you we went to uh, hotel management school together? I told you. Mm, just a lucky guess. <laughs> what a great guy he is. And is he famous? Well, you're making it, too. Yeah, but he just bought a big, beautiful hotel in Arizona. One little hotel. He married a gorgeous society girl. Well, you could marry one, too. And he's a millionaire. Now you're talking. Have you got a breath? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir. Go, sir. Ah, yes, sir. I want to talk with you. Ah, is this about my idea? Which idea? Every time I open my suggestion box, it's stuffed full of your ideas. For passengers that don't smoke, let's make the top deck of the ship a non-smoking section. That's ridiculous. You do it on airlines. <laughs> you convinced me, go. I'll use this the moment we set sail. For confetti. Michelle, do you do you get uh do you support the captain when he's you know showing his dark side by being dismissive of Gopher? No, because I thought Gopher had some really good ideas. Yeah, and the captain's just shooting him down like they're nothing. Well, haha, Captain Stubing, because shortly after that, the friends do arrive, his friend and his completely attractive wife, and they're about to throw a little monkey wrench into the captain's dismissiveness. <laughs> I must have been talking to my mom. Well, I saw your picture in the society page, but it sure doesn't do me justice. Gopher, you always know the diplomatic thing to say. Now, what did I tell you? I think he'd be absolutely perfect. Perfect for what? It's a surprise. We'll tell you later. Why not ask him now? Ask me what? What? Honey, whose idea was this? What idea? It was yours, Tom. Look, let me handle it my way. We'll spring it on him at dinner. Gopher? We'll see you later. Come on. Oh, wait, no. Spring what? Wait, Phil, wait a minute. You can't just leave me in suspense like this. Michelle, did you ever want to go to a magician's assistant school? No. Well, magicians creep me out. Didn't you say that you were into ventriloquism and magic? No. It's like the one-two punch. <laughs> right, <laughs> Covering then... everything. <laughs> All right. Well. The next is Melinda Nod. Maggie Walsh. She plays the assistant to the magician that they booked for the trip. Hello. May I help you? I'm Maggie Walsh. I work with Ken Breyer, the magician. Oh, yes, of course. How nice to meet you. My name is Julie McCoy. I'm the cruise director. Hi. Wow, must really be fun working with a magician. Oh, it's more than fun. I mean, it's terrific. He's terrific. I mean, 
Well, we're... Uh, I don't know how to put this. I think I get the picture. <laughs> well, Miss Walsh, you and Mr. Breyer have adjoining cabins on the Aloha deck. Cabins 272 and 274. He hasn't checked in yet. Well, I better get these things unpacked. See you later. Bye. Now, Maggie thinks that her regular partner is going to be performing on the ship, but that's not the case. Ron Palillo shows up, and he is Al. The brother. Breyer, yeah. The brother of Ken Breyer. What are the chances? Two brothers being magicians? Hmm. Maybe that's commonplace. I don't know. He taught him everything he knew. I guess. He's like the little brother. But he shows up. He immediate, you know, I was thinking back then, too, especially, I was really getting depressed because think of how many poor little rabbits and doves were, like, abused back in that time. You know, I was thinking that, too, and I was closely watching... Ron, how, how he, he handled it. He was very gentle. He was, but can you imagine how many got mistreated? No, That's I was, all I could think about. It's funny. I was thinking the same thing, especially doves. Doves it, had yeah. to be like murdered at a high rate back then. Yeah, because there was so many magic things going on, and people were not mindful of animals at all mm-hmm. back then. Oh, my gosh. That's all I could think about. But he's got one sitting under his hat, you know, <laughs> being deprived of air for God knows how long, just so he could pull a prank on Julie. <laughs> The great Breyer at your service. Oh, our magician. Let's see. Ken Breyer. Yes, you're on the Aloha deck, 272. I'm Al Breyer. Ken had an emergency and he asked me to step for him. Oh, I hope your brother's okay. Oh, he's fine. Don't worry about him. His emergency was a girl in Las Vegas. <laughs> uh, you are a magician. Oh, yes, I'm I'm a very fine magician. Oh, well, that's terrific. Well, can you pull a rabbit out of your hat? Well, uh... I can try. Some hats. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, not this hat. <laughs> yeah, all right. Come on. I kind of dug this next part. Why? Because Rhoda's mom's got all kinds of old antique <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, she's going to sink that ship with all her heavy furniture. You and her have a lot in common. <laughs> I don't have an old grandfather <laughs> clock that I have to have on my All you do ship. is play your Victrola all day <laughs> long. Why a Victrola, though? I mean, this lady's rich. And she was probably like 40 years old at the time, too. And <laughs> it was like, I do like the idea, though, of living on a ship, though. She booked five years on that ship. You know what? With the way that ships are now, if you could handle sort of like you didn't get seasick and all that, maybe it'd be kind of awesome. You could just do anything all day long, you know? Like, I want ice cream right now, and then you go get ice cream. Or I want dim sum right now, and you go get that, too. I wonder if the nacho bar is open. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she's all of a sudden all this old furniture is being unloaded into one of these tiny little cabins because Her cabin looked good it did it looked nicer than all the others because mrs waterhouse is moving in watch out for that clock dearies grandfather belonged to my grandmother it wasn't the other way around <laughs> welcome aboard mrs waterhouse not welcome aboard captain stubing welcome home. isn't it wonderful julie yes uh wonderful Oh, I'm so excited, and I've got marvelous plans for everybody on the crew. Now, I must remind you that my crew is here to work for Mrs. Waterhouse. Oh, now, come now. Don't be an old buddy, Duddy Merrill. We're going to be like one big family. Oh, can't wait to get my things in my cabin. Well, let me go get you a steward to help. Uh, Darling, do you remember the one I had last time? The old grouch with the long face, never cracked a smile? Charles Fletcher. Now, he is assigned to your deck, but I'll try to switch it. No, 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 no. I don't want to cause any problems. Bye-bye. So, Michelle, like like your favorite lady, she's nice. She's not like mean. She's not like, you know, like stern or whatever for some sort of like older, rich woman. She's very nice. The crew seems to be familiar with her because I think maybe she takes like semi-regular cruises. Yeah, because that's she likes cruises so much that she wants to live on them. So she kind of is taking on a motherly role with these people because she has all kinds of plans for each crew member. Yeah, I noticed that. You're totally correct. Um, Did you notice? I thought that there was sort of a Wizard of Oz parallel to it because she had all these things for each one of the crew members that they were going to do or become. Well, you know, I didn't at the time, but now that you're bringing it up, it totally makes sense. And it totally is kind of heading in that direction. It was pretty funny, though, because Doc Doc had some pretty good jokes towards the very end of it. Because she wanted to make Isaac a star. She was going to make Julie the captain of a ship. And then <laughs> Doc was going to get married again. <laughs> so, she's so bummed out about that. I'm back with friends again, a whole new family. People I can do things for. 
Oh, you don't have to do anything for us, Mrs. Waterhouse? Oh, yes, I do. I've got projects for everybody. Doc, I want to get you married off. Well, I've already been married off. And on and off and on and off. No, no, no. This time, for keeps. Patty, are you proposing, you rascal? Cut that out. I'm too young for you. Isaac, I have a project for you. You still want to make me an actor? Well, I mean, look at that face. Doesn't that belong on the screen? Uh, that's not going to be easy, because the rest of me is staying on the ship. Uh, Julie, don't think I've forgotten you. I have a project for you, too. You're going to have a wonderful career at sea. Well, Mrs. Waterhouse, I already have a great career at sea. No, no, what I mean is you are going to be the first female captain of a cruise ship. Oh, is that all? Hmm. Oh, great. You're going to make Julie a captain, Isaac a movie star, and me miserable. But in the room, there is also Charlie. And she requested him specifically. To sort hang- of the curmudgeonly older whatever he is. To hang her chandelier <laughs> yeah. in her cap. Like, why would you put a chandelier in a ship? <laughs> I don't know. To make it fancier? I have mm-hmm. no idea. But yeah, so he's in the room too, and these two are going to be very interconnected throughout this cruise. But before we get to that, Horshack's got to drop some serious news on the assistant. Yes, because they had adjoining rooms. Oh, Ken, I was getting worried about you. Oh, oh. Hi, um, I'm Al, Ken's brother. Uh, Maggie, right? Yes, hi. hi. Where's Ken? Uh, he's not here. He couldn't make it. Nothing's wrong, is there? I mean, he's all right. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, oh. He's fine. He uh, had to go to Vegas. It's another girl, isn't it? <laughs> of course not. You don't have to cover for him. Hey, look, um, I don't know anything about that, but if you're worried about the act, don't be. Ken taught me everything I know. For your sake, I hope he taught you how to work alone. So, Michelle, thank God. Because you were so eager to know what the news was that Gopher's friends, they didn't make you wait very long, did they? They sure didn't. These guys, they not only work in the hotel business, this dude owns a hotel. (laughs) Better than a hospital. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) So I can't remember how, like if they accidentally just bumped into each other. But the only thing that I noticed was Elaine Joyce was wearing two blue napkins. (laughs) <laughs> Did you see her outfit when she was walking down the hall? Yeah, I thought that was a really, really, I don't even know what to say about it. It's, it's shocking. It looked like a table napkin that you get in a restaurant <laughs> over the top of her and then around her waist. She is so slight. She is so small that she had just two little mild pieces of, two handkerchiefs are basically <laughs> there you covering go. her. Handkerchiefs are better. But hey, that's not what was taking precedence there. The news was taking precedence. And they wanted to lay an amazing opportunity on Gopher. Oh, hey. Okay, you two. I can't wait until tonight. What's the big secret? Go on. Tell him before he dies of suspense. Okay. Gopher, how'd you like to be in the hotel business? Never mind it. What's the secret? That's it. Phil wants you to manage his new hotel. Me? Manage a hotel? You're putting me on. Just the kind of guy I'm looking for. Now, Gopher, what do you say? Well, uh, I'm... I'm... uh, I think I'm getting a speech impediment. (laughs) It's a gorgeous hotel. Two swimming pools, a professional golf course. We're even putting in a health club. Oh, forget the health club, honey. I thought it over. It's not that practical. But you loved the idea when I came up with it. Look, we'll keep it on the back burner. Now, what do you say, Gopher? Well, Phil, gee, I'm very flattered, but, well, the ship is home to me. I mean, um, the crew's like a family to me. Whatever you're getting, I'll double your salary. Who needs family when you have rich friends? (laughs) Then you'll take the job? Well... Please, it's a big decision for me. Uh, can I have some time to think it over? Sure, kid. Could you let me know in the morning? Go for it. Maybe sooner. <clears throat> Quite the coincidence that uh, the captain is coming down hard on Gopher, and then he gets this great opportunity to run a hotel. Well, that is true, but I'm going to push back because the captain always kind of gives Gopher a hard time. It's true. You're and right. They're just, I think they're emphasizing it on this one. But the the captain really does kind of like ride Gopher a little bit and clowns on him throughout most of these cruises. But I think we've covered that, that like he has a paternal sort of thing with Julie and with Gopher. It's more maybe like father son where he knows that Gopher has a lot of potential, but maybe he's, he's not maximizing that potential because he's a little bit of a goof. I found Gopher's room interesting. I was trying to, again, like... 
Why? Don't you like Bogey? You don't like Bogey? <laughs> like, maybe all the posters that he had in his room. His maybe. Edward G. G. Robinson poster. <laughs> like, did he want to be an guys... actor, too? I mean, those are odd posters for a young man to have yeah, in their in 20s. His cabin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nancy Walker is working really hard, I think, to get a Vagoda to like her. He's a very attractive <laughs> funeral director looking guy, you know. Really full of life. He's really animated. I love Abe Vigoda. No, I do too. Everybody does. He was awesome on Barney Miller, you know, he Fish. Was Fish. And then the spin off show Fish. Do you remember that? I, I kind of watched that a little bit, I think. I, it's just like the weirdest thing. Abe Vigoda is like this guy who really, he did the same thing all the time. It really was very like low key, but you still liked him. You just liked him every time. Remember he was on Conan O'Brien all the time? They'd yes. always have him on. He's the best, Yeah, man. he was the best. He was really good up until the very end. Well, maybe we're all in love with Abe Vigoda then. <laughs> we understand what Nancy Walker sees in him. But she's getting him in trouble all the time. I know. He had drinks to deliver, and she made him go dancing on the deck. Charlie, Charlie. Oh, here comes trouble. Charlie, it's not fair for you to still be working at this hour. Now, come on, let's go dancing. No, I'm not allowed to dance with the passengers. So you want to dance with me, right? I didn't say that. Okay. Get rid of this tray. And we'll dance right here. Get rid of this tray. Dance. Do this. Do that. Uh-huh. Is it so bad, is it? No, this is water. Eddie, Eddie. Charlie. Charlie, listen. Uh, the people in Promenade 352 are complaining. You were supposed to deliver their drinks 20 minutes ago. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm coming. You did it again. They are not the only passengers on the ship. Mr. Fletcher was looking after me. I'll say he was. Oh, and, and she also, they like earlier in this, when she got him in trouble the first time, was they were playing my favorite shuffleboard. <laughs> <laughs> when you move on to a ship, you're going to have so much fun. I am. I've never been on a ship, but I'm just going to just move right in, sight unseen. <laughs> Like, rather than book a trip, I'm going to book five years shuffleboarding in nacho bars. <laughs> but after that, the focus of this cruise is the entertainment. And Ron Palillo, he does his first. He does his first act without an assistant. But then it ends with something else that we would see all the time. The lady in the box. And I swear, <laughs> I would get stressed out by those me things. Me too. <laughs> it, was, it was so upsetting to me as a kid. Like, especially the thing that would upset me the most what? is like when they go by the neck oh, I don't and like they it. drop that piece in and it made that like clicking noise. Like yeah. they were trapped in that box. Well, because they do it really, they exaggerate it, make it right. violent and loud. But it's like, it always freaked me out. I didn't like when like when they push in the big blade and then it won't go in like it's actually <laughs> going through their body. Right? And every magician did that. Every it. magician had it get stuck halfway through. Yeah, poor Julie got stuck in it. And then it's like, the only thing they didn't have is sometimes they would make a lady hold a handkerchief in oh, their that's hand. that's right. <laughs> they didn't have that part. But I still don't know how they do that trick, like how they pull it apart. Because it was a part and it's just like, how do they do it? I still don't know. I don't like to demystify magic. I like to pretend like it's real. But he does that. <laughs> My favorite part is if you watch Captain Stooping, he's engrossed. Oh, I, th- I know. He really is. Like, why well, he's so impressed with he's this. He's on the edge of his seat. <laughs> I love that Captain Meryl Steubing loves to be entertained. He's very easily entertained, too. He's the best audience. <laughs> he's so into it. It's the greatest thing. But the assistant's kind of watching during this, even though she's kind of getting over her sadness, and she sees the act, and she is delighted and impressed with his magical skills and his entertainment skills, and she starts to have, like, a change of heart, but not before the grand finale. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that's it for tonight, folks. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, the bar is open and the dance floor is empty, so have a good time. Oh, wait, wait, what about me? You can't leave me here. Wait, come on. Hey, that's not funny. I also liked his like sense of humor that he had along with his magic tricks. Well, you weren't alone. No, I wasn't. Because the assistant shared your feelings. 
And so did I. <laughs> he was really good. He was funny and he's very personable. And then he still was attaching it to like some pretty decent classic magic. <laughs> and she then changes her mind and says that she'd be happy to be the assistant. I really like the way that they developed this, Michelle. I did too. Because th- there was never, and, and this is like just, we're revealing it all. I'm going to right now. May like as well. there was never any conflict between the two of them. The conflict came from the brother. Right. And that was really cool that this relationship just kind of developed. And because he was nice and very different from this this sibling of his, that uh, he was allowing her to feel the way that she felt. And then she just started to become drawn to him. And I thought that it was really cool. I did, too. I had no complaints about this relationship. No, I enjoyed it a lot. So now she was going to be his assistant for the remainder of the cruise, which was really cool. Where normally something would have been bad between the two people. Something really nice was happening. May I sit down? If you tell me to get lost, I'll understand. Oh, no. Oh, please. Thanks. I caught your act. You're very good. Thank you. I'm not my brother, but... I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring up a sore subject. That's all right. I've cried him out of my system. Practically. Well, good. You're too nice for him anyway. You're pretty nice yourself. Listen, if you'd like, I'd be happy to work the act for the rest of the cruise. Oh, I'd like that a lot. (laughs) You're really very good. Much funnier than Ken. That's the first time anybody's ever said that I was better than Ken at anything. Now, Michelle, we both do not like the idea of any of the crew leaving. No. The idea of Gopher leaving this ship is depressing to me. <laughs> Julie leaving, any of these people leaving, I, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. Mm-hmm. And the crew is handling it pretty well. They are celebrating it. They are congratulating him that he has this great opportunity to become a hotel manager. <laughs> <laughs> That's another TV series. Yeah, I hotel. guess so. And so they're toasting him, and then the captain's got to get in a dig towards the end. Go for, can you remember? I can't remember. Like, he goes maybe specifically to give his resignation? I don't, maybe, but then it kind of seemed like maybe he wanted to kind of talk it out with him a little bit. Oh, and then it just, it just kind of blew up. Because then the captain just, was it back to the uh, suggestion box again? Insults? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, and I think it just, that was the final straw for Gopher. Come in. Captain Stewing, good evening, sir. Uh, sir, I wanted to discuss with you... this isn't another one of your harebrained ideas, Gopher. Sir, this isn't an idea. Neither were any of the others. <laughs> sir, this concerns my professional future. Your professional future, Gopher, would be more secure if you spent more time working and less time stuffing the suggestion box. Well, if that's the way you feel, sir, then why did you put up the suggestion box? That's the best suggestion you've made yet. Take it down. Take it down yourself, sir. I quit! Feeding him. think that the captain was just so matter of fact with him quitting what do you mean like he quit and the captain was just kind of like either he didn't believe him or he was just like oh okay you know what i think like in those instances that's where i let it all go i don't i don't pay attention to sort of like figuring it out i think that they're just using the tone so it doesn't get bummery even though gopher gets mad that it never really allows it to get too heavy you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so him being maybe what you're thinking like blasé or something like that, that he's not really concerned is just a way to not take it on in some sort of heavy soap opera way. That's the way, uh, unless I'm misunderstanding no, what you're asking. could be correct, I guess. That's how I just take it. Like they don't get into it too much on that because they want to still keep it light. Yeah. You know? and, and that's how I perceive all that stuff. That and that's what sense. I like. That's why I never bail on, on the love boat because I like that it keeps that tone happening and it, it stays positive. True. Even when someone's doing something like quitting, you know, Mm -hmm. quitting. So then Gopher pulls up his white socks (laughs) and he runs to these other people to let them know, you know, he kind of lays the good news on them that he is taking the gig. Gopher's so nice. I sure hope he's going to take the job. Well, we'll soon find out. Good morning, Gopher. Oh, good morning. Boss, Mrs. Boss. Good career move, buddy boy. You won't regret it. As the saying goes, Gopher, we're glad to have you aboard. Hey, that's no way to talk to a landlubber. <laughs> Gopher, could I have a word with you, please? Well, I really don't see the point in it, sir. 
Oh, I'm sorry. I was hoping you might have a change of heart. No, sir. Change of employers. These are the Livingstons. Well, I'm going to manage their new hotel. Oh, a better job. Now, that makes sense. <laughs> you know, for a minute, I thought you were leaving because of me. <laughs> certainly wouldn't hold you back, Gopher. Congratulations. I wish you all the best. Congratulations to all of you. And Bobby Van must make the longest call to Phoenix to let them know. How much would that phone call cost, Michelle, that ship to shore? <laughs> he couldn't have waited till they, they docked. But, th- I mean, he was gone all afternoon on that call. And, th- and that's how uh, then Elaine Joyce and Gopher spent a lot of time together. Yeah, because we find out that she has good ideas, too. Mm-hmm. And much like, you know, again, it's a mirror. It's a reflection of what's happening with, with Gopher and the captain, that they're not being taken seriously it's true and she had a good idea about the health club oh her ideas were all like off the charts great you know like they were excellent every hotel has a health club now yeah you know why because bobby van thought of it (laughs) wait wait let me change that took credit for all those ideas (laughs) i'm sure he did in classic old-fashioned business (laughs) let somebody else come up with all the great ideas and you put your name on it Mm -hmm. it's great that people are getting jobs but you know what senior citizens are falling in love (laughs) Because Hetty finally reveals to Charlie, it's why she brought the Victrola. I should have shut my mouth. There was a reason. She's smart. <laughs> she wanted to play some sort of old-timey 78 record <laughs> on that thing and dance with him in her crowded <laughs> antique store room that she lives in. And she just admits to him that she really likes him. I want to apologize for last night. I didn't mean to get you into any trouble. Well, you did. Captain catches me out of line again. I'll be swinging like that chandelier. More like that. But has character. (laughs) Maybe that's why I like you. You do? Oh, come on, Charlie. Don't play games with me. You know I do. Maybe you could say you like me a little bit, too. I mean, if you really do. Well, I, I guess I do. Do you really, Charlie? I just said so, didn't I? Hetty? Hetty. You know, I still have a rain check to cash. What rain check? From our interrupted dance last night. Well, you can't dance here. There's no room. And there's no Captain Stubing either. (laughs) It's kind of nice. It is nice, and then he kind of quickly comes around. In his weird way. (laughs) (laughs) No emotion. Yeah, zero. (laughs) But he does offer to take her on a was a midnight picnic. Yeah, I want to talk about this for a second. Okay. Do you have any notes on this? Mm, no. All right. You know where they were when they went on the picnic, right? Where? Where they always go in that moonlight section. Of Our the... favorite. We always call it, what, the bow? Yeah. I don't know if it is. I don't know if we're using the right ship terminology. Maybe it's just the deck of the ship. Probably I don't know. Probably the deck. But, but it's, it's always in the moonlight. The Yeah, the dark corner in the moonlight. As she's, like, revealing her love for him, and vice versa in a way, uh, we get to another big-time reveal. But before we do, didn't you notice the warship that was in the distance? No! (laughs) The the Pacific Princess was under fire or something. (laughs) Because there literally was, like, some sort of military ship off in the distance that they did not think was necessary to, like, let's shoot on a different day. There's an absolute military. Oh. We need Stephen P. Slivka for this because he probably knows the exact like model number of the ship or whatever. Just by the, was it a silhouette? It was a shadow in the distance of oh. like a warship. I gotta warship. go back and watch it because I think I was so engrossed on their relationship that I totally missed it. Oh my god, it's all I could notice. I'm like, <laughs> why is that in the background? Well, whatever, because she's telling him that. And I mean, I would imagine this is pretty cool, too, because this complicated everything in a pretty interesting way, because I would think that, you know, she requested this dude on purpose. She's moving on to the ship for five years. She probably wanted to be with this guy. Right. I think that's what they were alluding, that that her purpose was she was making all these plans for everybody. And then her plan was to get with Charlie. But then Charlie has some news that he needs to break to her. Speaking of military ships dropping a bomb. I don't think I've ever been this happy in my life, Charlie. I know what you mean. I wish it wouldn't end. It doesn't have to end. I'm going to be on the boat for a long, long time. I'm not heading. This is my last cruise. What? Your last? I, uh, 
I never expected any anything like this to happen. I'm retiring. I got myself a nice little apartment. Hit down. Big enough for one. But you've changed my mind. Then you're not retiring. Oh, yes. Now I want a, an apartment big enough for two. Come with me, Hetty. But, but, Charlie, I just moved on the ship. No, stay here with me. Yeah. No, no, I've had it with the sea. Come with me, Hetty. But, Charlie, I've got a lot of money. We could have a wonderful life here. I've had a wonderful life here. I want to change. It would be different now. Mm -hmm. 32 years is enough. Charlie, you're a, you're a stubborn old man. And you're a stubborn old lady. Just her luck, she changes her whole life to move on to the ship, and this is his last cruise. Yeah, but he also, he offered for her right away to live in his little apartment that he got. He got like a <laughs> one-person apartment. Right. And then he said that he would get a two-person apartment, right? right? That was kind of like, you know, begrudgingly romantic. But I thought he needed a three-person apartment for him, her, and his eyebrows. <laughs> I thought you were going to no, her See grandfather bush- clock. no way. Her grandfather. Well, four, four. His eyebrows are so bushy. I couldn't stop looking at that. I, I did take a second away from the warship and then noticed his big bushy eyebrows. But yeah, so that complicates it, and that was really sad because, like, she really did. You'd think, like, you're excited, you've moved onto the ship, you've made this major, major change in your life, and then he throws that at her, which is not his fault. No, it's nobody's fault. It's just bad luck. Yeah, and that was really kind of that was um upsetting. You know, I do find that most magic also, I, we touched on it a little bit with the slicing a person in half, but it really is anxiety inducing. It's absolutely upsetting. <laughs> Anytime someone did what this is about to happen, this is like the big, big act. I, it was so nerve wracking to me. I didn't <laughs> like it at all. Yep. I'm sure it stressed me out as a kid too. Oh, absolutely. So, you know, Ron, and, and then it makes it worse because he's so likable. So she's there. She's dressed very, very cute as the assistant. And they're about to do some big act, you know, by the pool. Right. <laughs> and he's got some pretty good patter, pretty humorous. Yeah, I, I can't even talk about it anymore. Hang on. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the princess proudly presents the great Brian. <laughs> Thank you, thank you all very much. First, I would like to introduce my beautiful assistant, Maggie, who I am happy to say is back on the job. (laughs) And now, for a death-defying escape, previously attempted by only a handful of magicians, may they rest in peace. Maggie, will you please show the audience that the chains are solid and the locks are bolted. I will now step into the bag, which will be locked and bolted. This is Ken Strecker. You sure you've done it before? Dozens of times. But this is the first time underwater. Oh. (laughs) If I'm late for dinner... Start without me. (laughs) Bye now. I don't know why, but suddenly I'm reminded of my second marriage. Did they put him in a straitjacket? No. Oh. No, there was no straitjacket. They just threw him in a sack. He got in a sack. I think it would have been worse if they put him in a straitjacket. But, yeah, they still locked... Locked him up in a sack. And then those two, like, the guy that always plays the waiter. Yeah, with the big bushy mustache. Yeah. Did you see that, like, they really had a person in the sack because they were really straining? They it's like, were. why didn't they just fake it, put some laundry in there? But they really, like, had a person and it was killing them to throw him into the pool. I wonder if it was really him because he's kind of on the smaller side. It would have been easier to toss him in. It, not really. I, Ron Palil's more dense than that he looks because <laughs> they were having a hell of a time trying to throw him into the pool. At least it looked like it. Otherwise, that guy was a great actor because it looked like he was really killing himself. But they threw him in and then 
everyone in the crew is just commenting about how long can you stay underwater before you die? <laughs> and they keep asking Doc, and Doc never answered. <laughs> he didn't have an answer. You're a doctor. You should know that. Longer than that, I hope. <laughs> oh, my God. It was crazy. And then she literally thinks he doesn't clue her in, and then she jumps into the pool in her weird jump, her weird forward jump, like she's three years old <laughs> and still hasn't learned how to dive yet. And then he, of course, was fine. In the little weird shower, the single shower that's next to the pool on the Pacific Princess. And then they just full on make out in the pool together. <laughs> I hate that. That's the, it happens a lot where like. You uh, hate I, love. I, no, I don't hate love. I hate public affection like that. I don't want to see people making no, out. You just want to eat me. and drink and eat and drink. At least Nancy Walker and Fish, they. Uh, it did it in the room. And, no, they kissed on the cheek. Yeah, they because the older generation they're more respectful, they're more discreet. They're not like these young people in the 1970s <laughs> all kissing each other out in the open. But speaking of kissing, Michelle. Yes. Oh my goodness, I was not expecting that. This also was like anxiety inducing. It for was. Me. And they did a great job doing this. They did. What are we talking about? Gopher. I'm going to say Elaine Joyce. <laughs> now, this is weird. There's something about this that was really weird, and I wondered if you noticed this, too. So, like, these two are at a table together. You know, Gopher gets toasted by the crew and stuff, and, like, the captain's kind of, like, acting pretty okay about things. And, you know, this other dude is on his eternal, you know, ship-to-shore call, the husband, mm -hmm. not paying attention to her, being dismissive of her ideas, and Gopher's just, like, really nice, and he likes her ideas, and she starts to get a little funny. And then they go to the dance floor. <laughs> and the thing that was weird about this scene was they were on the dance floor and then all of a sudden they were not. Right. They were on, outside by the pool dancing. That was weird. That is weird. I, I didn't notice that till the second time around. Oh, that, like, I did it just, notice it the first time. No, like it was like this magical thing where all of a sudden they had like danced their way out to the pool by themselves. I guess they were just dancing the night away. I guess that's what it was. And then... It gets as close to a makeout sesh since earlier that afternoon during the great water illusion <laughs> because she's kind of liking Gopher and she's kind of thinking like, you know, she maybe made a mistake with this other person. Because Gopher's listening to her, treating her like a smart, intelligent woman and taking her ideas seriously. I think Gopher made a big mistake. <laughs> I think so. He could have the her and She's the so hotel cute. management position. Oh my god, they should have just muscled that dude out of the whole thing, <laughs> sent him back and back to like Palm Springs. They should have worked something where like all the contracts were signed over to them and then they could have started a life together cuz she was cute as can be. Holy mackerel, they both had good ideas. They did. They could have put their heads together and figured out a way to get rid of Bobby Van. <laughs> Power couple. <laughs> but that's not what happens cuz Gopher's a good guy. Right, and he backs away. Maybe we should go look for Phil. Phil who? Your husband. Oh, that's Phil. I'm just so happy you're taking the job, Gopher. We're going to have such fun. You and I. Yeah. Uh, wait a minute, Melody. Uh, this is nuts. And wonderful at the same time. Um, this can't be. I'll see you around the ship. Dude. Yes? How sleazy was the magician's brother? <laughs> magician's brother? Dude. <laughs> How sleazy was the magician's brother? He was a creep. He's your type. No. <laughs> like he showed up, he had his Not shirt, his type. silky shirt wide open. And did you notice the other noticeable thing about him, the noteworthy thing about him? I didn't, but was he wearing an Italian horn? It was not an Italian <laughs> horn. Do you know what it was? No. In his bed of dark chest hair with his shirt wide open, he had a golden lightning bolt. <laughs> I'm so mad at myself. How it was, did I not see dude, that? And not only was it a golden lightning bolt, it was huge. Like it was like literally like three oh, inches long. I'm disappointed in myself right now because you I, I I'm always, stunned. I always notice the jewelry on people. Lightning bolt. Well, you're gonna need to go back because that is really worth checking out. Like, there's two things I need to go back and look for. And guess who's getting one? Me. 
love for your Italian chest hair. <laughs> thing was awesome, man. The thing was great. <laughs> I know what to get you for Christmas. <laughs> oh my god! Wait, you're getting me more than that. There was something else I can't remember what it was. Giant oh, wait. suit. No chaps cologne. Oh, you're right. chaps cologne and golden light. Look out, people. <laughs> Maybe a nice tracksuit, too. Oh, I would kill for that. We got to get on a cruise, man. <laughs> Everyone's going to avoid us like the plague. We will be first in line at anything we want to go to. People can get away from those because I'll have a captain's hat on, too. Yeah, so he shows up with his golden lightning bolt thinking, I don't know what happened with the other girl, like it wasn't working out or something. So he just shows up like, hey, the master's here. Take a back seat, brother. I've got it under control. And he thinks this girl's just going to fall all over herself. But that's not what happens. It's open, honey. Hello, sweetheart. <laughs> Ken? Well, uh, what are you doing here? Well, oh, that chick in Vegas was a real loser. And you know me. I don't waste any time. I figured if I flew down here right away, I'd still be in time to be with Maggie. So where is she? Uh, uh next door. Perfect. Uh, here you go, pal. What's this? It's your flight to L.A. Leaves in an hour from uh, Mazatlan International, whatever they call it. Hey, look, you don't have to thank me, kid. Just sorry I haven't packed. I can't. It's about Maggie. Don't worry about Maggie. I'll say goodbye for you, okay? One second. Wait till you see her face light up. (laughs) Ken, what are you doing here? Hello, love. I couldn't stay away from you another minute. Hey, wait a second. Uh, What do you think about just strolling in here all of a sudden? I know, I know you're mad at me. And I deserve it. But I'm going to make it up to you, I promise. And from now on, things are going to be just like they used to be. You've got to be kidding, Ken. Where's Al? Don't worry. He's on his way back to L.A. He told me to say goodbye to you. Hey, Ken. Ken. Before I go, you got to see my new trick. The timing is terrific, kid. Terrific. <laughs> Ken, this is only going to take a minute. Believe me, you have never seen anything like this. <sighs> Maybe we better humor him. Besides, uh, we've got all night. Yeah, well, uh, now, if you'll just hold one in each hand, please. Thank you. Now, Ken, if you'll just stand here in the doorway. Okay, I can't wait Come on, somebody. Ken, this is a terrific trick you can use in your act. Now, uh, would you take two steps backwards, please? <laughs> Come on, funny man, open up. Hey, it's a great book, Ken. I really think you're going to like it. When the candle goes out, take a nap. <laughs> Wasn't it weird, too, that he had, like, a ticket for him to go back? Why don't just let him finish out the cruise? No, because he's a jerk. Because he doesn't think about anyone other than himself. I guess he kind of did that he actually had a ticket for him. <laughs> but, yeah, it was just kind of weird. It's like, here. And he didn't even know wherever it is, Mazidlan, wherever you're going to go, <laughs> send him on his way. A little dangerous to lock your brother in a closet with a candle with, a op- with an open flame, but <laughs> a cruise ship. He's a magician. He can figure out how to get <laughs> yeah. out of there. That's what I figured. I mean, really, those doors can't be that. Heart no, he kicked that thing open in five. Days. Actually, when he shuts it, it doesn't shut right away. <laughs> None of the doors do. When when Bobby Van came, like Bobby, oh no, that's coming up. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, you may as well get into it now. Yeah. Um. Well. Well. Hang on. I don't want to just a second because the relationship between Ron Palillo and I, I like when we just change the names from real <laughs> people to their to their regular they characters or from a whole other show. Crazy. Yeah. We're, <laughs> we're sorry, you guys. It's just how we perceive all of this. It's one big jumbo of, of like our childhood is all of these characters. The ones that we like the best is how we will always Maggie know Maggie Walsh, Melinda Nod. Yeah, but the way that those two were together and she didn't like the brother. She didn't have two seconds of like, you know, uh, thinking about that. She was revolted that he showed up and that their relationship was just like super cute. Like throughout after that, after her initial like hurt. It's true because that was like another thing like that was causing me anxiety. Like is she going to now yeah. dump Ron after yeah. all this and then go for back with the brother and yeah. then she didn't yeah so this this relationship just stayed cute and i did have that same exact feeling that same moment of like oh no i hope that she doesn't go with this guy but they don't let that happen too long and i that's what i really enjoyed about these two we had alluded like a few minutes ago about doors not closing yes take us to the next scene oh god that's right well you know, after that almost moment of adultery between Gopher and the beautiful Elaine Joyce, you know, Gopher is a good guy and he doesn't. And she comes to his cabin to apologize that she kind of like lost her head. Mm-hmm. And you can understand it. I mean, like w- w- when you are, you know, trying so hard and you're getting kind of neglected in a way and you lose your head. 
on the ship sometimes in the moonlight. And he said, you know, there, he was explaining like there's no real reason. But <laughs> Bobby Van shows up. He, and, <laughs> he just busts right in. Yeah. Why, though? Why the urgency? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that was all about. But he does bust in. The door doesn't close because <laughs> there aren't any real latches. I don't know how those other people, how uh, Mr. Drummond couldn't get out since, like, all these doors seem pretty flimsy. I was just going to say that. Everybody can bust in so easily, but they couldn't bust out. Yeah, but Bobby Van comes in as, like, a jealous lover. And then Gopher lays down the law. Ah, uh, Phil. Well, don't let me interrupt anything, Pally. Oh, dear Phil, this is not what you think it is. Oh, I can see what it is. I offer you a job you think my wife is one of the fringe benefits. Well, what do you care? You're only interested in your business. You don't give a damn about me. Well, fine, but I'll just leave you two alone. I mean, I'd just be in the way. Oh, knock it off, Phil. Who are you trying to impress with this martyred husband routine? You want to believe there's something going on between Melody and me? Fine. But here's something else you should believe. You're throwing away a terrific lady here. Only you're so busy being a big wheel, you don't even realize you're ignoring her. Ignoring? Sometimes I feel my only function is to decorate your parties. And for a smart businessman, you're dumb. Melody has a million ideas. They're good ideas. But every time she comes up with one, you just shoot her down. I mean, you probably give your bellhops more respect. Well, I guess it's the old male ego. Business is a man's world. Wife belongs in the home, you know, all that stuff. Well, you could have the best of both worlds. Melody would make a heck of a manager for your new hotel. Well, I never thought of that. I guess there's a lot of things I never thought of. But I do know one thing. I don't want to lose you. Phil, you're not going to. Were you impressed how Gopher handled that entire situation? I I was. He stuck up for her, and he was right about it. He not only stuck up for this guy, he got an opportunity for a job. Then he decides not to take the job because he doesn't want to cause any problems between these people. He has walked away from his own job, and then he basically like gets these two back together. That is a lot of work. Not only does he get them back together... He gets him to hire his wife as the hotel manager. Yeah, he's like troubleshooting for this place and he's not even getting a paycheck. Right. But then he realized it was funny at the end that he realized he had quit his job. So he has to go back and uh, maybe pull one last miracle out of his magical hat. Captain Stooming, sir. Uh, Sir, I wanted to see you about... if uh... I was hoping it was you, Gopher. I just want to say that I'm very sorry to see you go. Well, sir, that's what I wanted to talk to you the about. The point is that you do have some good ideas. But it's too late now. Too late, sir. It's not necessarily too late now. <laughs> this may seem senseless to even ask, but would you consider staying on if I... Well, if I offered you a larger cabin? A larger cabin would be great. No, 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 no. Forget about you. That uh, here I am trying to bribe you. I should be ashamed of myself. Nothing wrong with a good bribe, sir. How many chances does a young man get to manage a hotel? Sometimes none. Well, go. I I wish you nothing but the best. Drop me a card whenever you get a chance. Thank you. Gopher, what if I promoted you to assistant purser? You got a deal. (laughs) Sir, wait a minute. What's the promotion? I was the assistant purser. The promotion is from the unemployment line to having a job. Phil Livingston said that you passed up his offer. Thank you, Captain. It's good to have you back. Uh, Sir, about my larger cabin, I'll just drop a note in the suggestion box. I'll uh, think about it. Well, sir, you got rid of the suggestion box. Oh, Well, then that takes care of that, doesn't it? That will be all, Mr. Smith. I thought that was a really funny scene, Mm -hmm. Michelle, because, like, the captain knew the whole time. And he was playing it pretty cool, offering go for a bigger cabin and all that. Yeah. And that's where, like, Fred Grandy is. He really, I think he had some serious, like, next level kind of, like, 
comedic like sitcom comedic skills the way he pulled all that off the way that he played that and him and like Gavin McLeod together are really funny and they did such a good job in this scenario with one another well that leads us really to the end of the cruise though Michelle I I know sadly And that's why this one's kind of cool, too, because we have not finished or resolved one of our scenarios. We have not. And that's what's great because they didn't, you know, they're breaking the rules a little bit yet. It still feels like a classic love boat. And I really like that. Mm -hmm. But the first people to leave are the magical act. Yes. Happy as can be. And guess what, guys? The brother's dead in the closet. (laughs) They're getting married. Hey, you know, for a substitute magician, you did a really good job. (laughs) You can say that again. Oh? <laughs> Say, uh, how would you like a magician on the next cruise? Well, maybe. Well, you'll find one in the closet of a lower 274. <laughs> <laughs> now our new power couple, Elaine Joyce and Bobby Van, are leaving. Yeah, they had like a mild flub at the end because then Gopher was asking a question about like finding a manager when he already suggested that she should be the manager. And then he says that he chose her as the manager. And then he gives them a gift of what? suggestion box. Well, so long, old buddy. Sorry you won't be with us. Oh, don't worry. You'll find a new manager. Well, I already have. Right here on the ship. We're going to keep it in the family. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, By the way, you might be able to use this at the new hotel. Is this for me? For you. (laughs) Bill, it's a suggestion box. (laughs) Use it well. I'm going to get a new one for the captain. King's side. <laughs> but then, sad, sad Charlie leaves Oh, I know. Michelle. And it is kind of sad when you think about that. He had been on this. Uh, did he beat PJ Muldoon? He had been on this <laughs> Hard to ship. Say. You guys, he had been on the ship for 32 years. We haven't <laughs> seen him one time. So it's like now he's leaving. With his duffel bag. Yeah, it's all he's got. He's got like some deodorant, a pair of boxer shorts, <laughs> and like, who knows, like a picture of his wife that he lost in like 1943. <laughs> and it's like he's leaving all sad. And they're like, ah, oh, come on, Charlie. It'll be fine. <laughs> Go to your one little tiny apartment. <laughs> they didn't have a retirement party for him or anything. I know. What's up, what's up with that? That's see crazy. See you later, Chuck. And, but this is the thing. Then we see all the antiques leaving, too. (laughs) All the guys had to get all those antiques again and bring them back out because Nancy Walker made a decision. Careful, you ninnies. Scratch that grandfather. You won't live to be one. Andy. Oh, Charlie. This is Waterhouse. Are you leaving? No, I know it hurts. But even if you got down on your hands and knees and begged me, my mind is made up. That is... And I thought that was really cute. It was. I thought that she had made up. That's a big decision to make up her mind like that. And that she was deciding to go with him because he was pretty adamant earlier when the warship was bearing down on them <laughs> that he had had enough of the ocean. Can you imagine being on a ship for 32 years? I mean, I can't. You probably will, but I can't imagine <laughs> that. You can call me ship to shore and tell me how it's going. <laughs> no. It had to be longer, though, than PJ Muldoon. <laughs> yeah. They really had flaming duck today. It was so great. I love it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good for you, Michelle. I'll see you at Christmas. Baked Alaska. <laughs> I'm so happy. They've got an arcade here. It's amazing. <laughs> All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I mean, unless I cut you off there, Michelle, I'm not taking your suggestions. (laughs) Do you have anything else to add? I'll put them in the suggestion box. (laughs) I like this episode a lot. I think everyone did a great job, and the writers did a really good job on this, the way that they kind of handled everything. It was a pretty solid episode. Totally agree with you, 100%. Yeah, we hope you guys liked it, too. We don't know what's happening next. I have lots of work to do coming up, you guys. This may come out a teeny tiny bit late because I have two shows in a row, and somehow I have to edit this together. (laughs) Burn the midnight oil. Yeah, give me a candle, shove me in a closet, and I am going to do my best (laughs) to get this thing edited by Saturday night. And uh, we're starting to consider like maybe releasing this on Mondays, maybe moving it to a Monday. Does anybody care? Does anyone care? Like, is there an ideal day that this comes out? I kind of dig like putting this out late on a Saturday because we were trying to stick to when the show 
aired right. on a Saturday night. You know, we're sticklers for like, you know, whatever tradition and nostalgia. Then I was thinking, I do like that. Like we basically let everybody know Sunday. It's kind of like a nice thing. You figure like, oh, hey, this is fun maybe to listen to later tonight or but mondays feel like good days to me too i don't know i wonder if anyone maybe i'll ask if there's a preference that anybody has for when is the best time to have a podcast drop leave it in the suggestion box (laughs) i think i will all right you guys until next episode i am ishvan i'm michelle captain stupid captain stupid please cover the bridge and we are loving Loving the the love love boat. boat